In today's video, I want to take a look at why are function pointers actually useful? Because I did take a look at how you can uh, use them, how to initialize them, how to declare them, how to then call them, link up top if you want to watch, but I didn't show you any sort of practical use case for them. And uh, I'm gonna take a look at how they are actually useful. First things first, I want to create here a simple example. Let's say we have uh, two functions, right? We have here an int sum, just a function that does summing between two numbers, right? And simply returns x plus y. And then I have another one uh, that returns the product, right? So we have here int y and let's define it properly, x times y. Now what I want is just a simple program takes into uh, random numbers and does something with them. So I'm gonna include here time.h, time.h, and I'm gonna initialize here the random generator. So s rand of time of null, and let's say here int a equals rand percent 100, and let's say int b equals rand percent 100. And what I want is a simple function that says printf, the result of the operation between between percent d and percent d is percent d and these guys are going to be the actual numbers and you have a b and you actually have an enter here uh, it's going to be a b and uh, whether we have sum or prod that depends on something so we're going to have here sum between a and b okay so that's fine we have a uh, this program and if I launch this of course of course I'm gonna get two numbers so 59 and 32 and they are gonna be summed together so that works properly as expected if we change it to prod that's fine as well right um, we're gonna get a problem between some pretty big numbers actually so that's kind of difficult to check but let's assume that that's the right uh, result now here comes the kicker what if I have this code I don't want to change it I have it inside a library somewhere outside of this project. I want to use it, but I want to change something to it. I want to change the operation, right? So I want it to do everything the same, but this operation has to change, has to be whatever I tell it to be. Well, in that case, we can use function pointers. First things first, let's create a simple function that says should not be changed. So this function, we really, we should not change it, right? Now, if we don't want to change it, then how do we actually change the operation here? The answer is actually function pointers. We can have here a function pointer inside the arguments and have it be a function pointer that returns an integer, right? Let's say like that, and let's call it operation and then it's going to take in two integers. So it does return an integer, it takes in two integers. And if we take a look at the functions up top, indeed, we take in two integers and we return one, of course. So that is the function pointer defined. Then we can, instead of calling prod here, we can call this function pointer with a and b. And to call this function that should not be changed, so what simply we have to do is just pass in a function pointer to either prod or sum, right? So now if we try to launch this, we're gonna get the product between the two, so is that. And if we change this to sum, we're gonna get uh, the summation between those two numbers. So that is how you can use this. And this is the real basic idea of every use case out there. You have a library out there that needs to do something just a tiny, tiny bit different, right? Everything else should be the same, just a tiny bit different here, the operation, and you have to somehow be able to change it. And those, uh, this is where the function pointers are used. Now let's take a look at the actual use case. So here on my website, I have the handling signals uh, lesson. And in here, if we copy the code and take a look at it in the Visual Studio Code, here uh, we can notice that we actually do use function pointers. And this SIG action here that we have defined to handle our signal was being passed a function pointer. And if we take a look at it, at its signature, well, it's gonna be a bit trickier to find it, but I think if we go here, 
we might find it. Ah, yes, there we go. So sing signal t, signal function, and there we go. This is the actual signature of the function that we have to pass in. It's a function that returns void and uh, takes in an integer. Similarly, for our intro to threads, so intro to threads here, we had a lesson that also started with function pointers. So this code here was actually using function pointers to tell the thread that we started. So here we have pthread create, creates a thread that executes something. And that something is the function pointer that we pass in here. Of course, this should be actually with a void pointer args maybe, because inside pthread create the function pointer. Actually, let's go here. The function pointer is defined like so it does return a void pointer and it takes in a void pointer, right? So these are at least two places where function pointers are used. And there are many, many other examples that you can find out there. Okay, I hope this was useful. Uh, I hope you got an idea of why these, are, uh, these function pointers are kind of interesting and you can do a lot of things with them if you really try it. And maybe this actually sparked a bit of interest in you and you could create a program that makes use of function pointers. That would be cool to see. But otherwise, I hope you uh, enjoyed this lesson. And if you do have any questions, leave them down in the comments below or on our Discord server. Again, the source code can be found on our website, as you saw before. Link in the description below. Take care. Bye.